Hey there, my name is Timothy Karambat, founder of Mimplex Labs and creator of Anything LLM. And today I am so excited to show you something that I'm going to show you something that isn't released yet, but will be by the time you watch this video. And that is a no code way to produce a fine tuned model. Now, there are a couple caveats to this, and I'm going to address them all just so that everybody is on the same page watching this video. So the first thing is that at the time of this video or by the time you watch it, the feature will be live on our Dockerized version, which you can find on GitHub, not on the desktop app version yet. The current desktop app version is 1.5.11. When that number is higher, then the feature is live. There's no other way to put that. If you want to download the desktop client so that you can use these fine-tuned models that I'm going to show you today, you can go to anythingllm.com and go to slash download, and you can download the correct installer for whatever your operating system is and have all of this. The next detail is that this feature is new and honestly pretty innovating. We're going to be able to allow you to just chat with any model you like, whether that be GPT or Anthropic or even a local LLM, and from the outputs of your chat, create a fine-tuned model that you can again load locally that already has all of your knowledge baked into it. And the last thing is that the current fine-tuning I'm going to show you today does not run locally. There's a couple reasons for this. The majority are really just two reasons. One is that GPUs for training are expensive, so it costs a little bit of money, but I think you'll find the price is pretty fair. And then second is that fine tuning is also really hard. Fine tuning, if you know how to do it, this video isn't for you. But if you're a person who has been using RAG and local LLMs and you know that fine tuning is the next step, which is logical because fine tuning plus RAG is very powerful, but you're not technical enough or really want to go through the pain of learning how to set up a fine tuning pipeline and infrastructure, then this video is perfect for you. Again, if you're a super technical person and you know how to fine tune, th this isn't for you. And actually, I'll be making a video after this one, hopefully, that actually shows how to do the fine tuning locally on a consumer grade GPU that you might have access to. And it makes everything a little bit easier to do, even if you don't know how to code. However, that video is coming in the future. I want to show you this feature today. Now, you may have noticed that I'm in a browser. That's because I'm using the Dockerized version or the multi-user version of anything LLM. This feature will exist in the desktop version, as I mentioned earlier in the video. The UI should look exactly the same. So you can follow along in this video, even if you're in the future and you're watching this video months after it's been posted. Now, I just want to walk you through the current setup just so that you can get an idea of how powerful streamlined fine tuning is going to be for you. So the first thing I want to do is let's check out what LLM I'm using. Right now, I'm actually using GPT-40 or Omni from OpenAI. Yeah, I'm going to create content with a what you would call a more powerful model and then use that to create a stronger fine tuned model. And you can see that I already have a workspace started. And in this workspace, I have a couple documents that are relevant to anything LLM. Uh, the readme is the readme or an old version of our readme from GitHub. Anything LLM.txt is a very short, just text blurb of what anything LLM even is. And then I even scraped our own website and just added that in. Those are three different data sources all in the same workspace. And then I've gone and just created traditional, very simple RAG chats. I also used some agent capabilities in this chat for web search just to get some better context and answers. And so you can see, I ask, what is anything LLM? And it says all of this stuff. And we have citations for every single answer that comes through. And you can see I kind of continued on here for a while. Um, just And then here I asked the agent to search the web and tell me more because this data wasn't in my workspace, but I think in the future its context could be useful and I'd like it in a fine tune. So I asked some questions. It says that it found some stuff. It says, you know, I was the person who founded it, which is fair and accurate. Um, there are lots of contributors and I'm very appreciative to every one of you. So it's not just a one man show. Um, asked it about the GitHub repo, all of this stuff. So we have some chats. This is not a lot of chats. In fact, actually, I think it's around 23 chats. And what we're hoping to accomplish today in this video is I want to take these chats, send them to a cloud GPU, create a fine tune of Llama 3 8B, send that back to me, and I'm going to run that model locally. 
and then ask it, what is anything LLM? And what we should hope to see is an accurate answer with just these 23 chats. Now, obviously, the more data you have, the better your answer can be. Obviously, if your answers are really bad or they're garbage, you'll get a garbage model output. But you can continuously fine tune a model over time, and that makes it even more powerful. And when you take the benefits of a fine tune model and RAG, you get a really awesome system. This brings me to my next point. What even is the difference of fine tuning versus RAG? This is a very simple chart. I really made it right before starting this video because the visual, I think, helps. When you have a fine tuned model, think of educating and how you learn subjects, right? You may read something in a book and that may become something of background knowledge to answer a question, but you couldn't say exactly what page and what book you got a piece of information from. That is a little like how fine tuning works. I'm obviously simplifying things dramatically. But in general, if you need a model to respond in a certain way, instead of just relying on a system prompt, or you want your answers to be more accurate to some niche subject that the foundational model isn't trained on, perfect. If you want perfect citation accurate recall, fine tuning is not the answer. That is RAG. But when you combine the two, you've now got a model that behaves in a certain way, answers questions in a certain way, but then also has the ability to cite those answers and has the background knowledge to back it up or fix or correct a piece of information that maybe it was trained on. Now, I understand a little bit of this could have been confusing. The process of getting a fine tune is not. I really don't want to bore everyone with the technical details because they're frankly not that important here. The output is really what people want from a fine tune. So let's just make a fine tune and then we'll test the output and see what happens. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up the settings, I'm gonna go to my workspace chats, and you can see all of my chat history, and we're just gonna to go to order a fine-tuned model. Again, let me reiterate that this process will eventually be possible locally, although I don't know how widely supported it will be, but for the sake of this video and this feature, this is a very simple cloud-based service, one-time cost, we give you the GGUF file so that you can run your fine tune locally. You get to keep it and take it anywhere you want, whether that be LM Studio, Olama, or anywhere else. And so one of the first things you'll see is we kind of tell you like, hey, if you want to fine tune, be sure that you actually want a fine tune. Now, while we can turn you a fine tune around in an hour, that doesn't necessarily mean that the fine tune will be the answer to all your questions, right? This is a tool, much like how RAG is a tool or how agents are tools. This is just another piece of the puzzle that makes a desktop-based AI system and assistant more powerful. We're gonna start the fine tune. And there are some privacy policy things, of course. In general, if you were wondering how this works, we do have to bundle and encrypt the data, send it to our cloud service, but that data is only used during training. It is not used in anywhere else, and it is deleted the second that a model is either unfinished or finishes. We get rid of your data as fast as possible. We understand this is a sensitive point for some people. We just ask for your trust. I feel like with the content we've put out and the code being open sourced, that trust can be earned. If again, if you're not comfortable with that or you wanna do everything locally, this particular video is not gonna be for you. You might wanna follow up in the next. And so all we have to do here is just provide an email that basically my model is gonna be sent to. And then we can select a base model. Right now, for the introductory version of this, we only have Llama 3 8B. And this will hopefully be expanded to other largely supported models like Gemma, Mistral, Phi, the models that you probably use. And then for the model name, this is simply just the name of our model. It doesn't really impact anything. We can call it anything LLM or let's do like fine tune anything all up. There's actually only 14 chats. We're really going to take a gamble and see if this <laughs> fine tune even works. And if it does, that again, just shows you the power of how competent fine tuning can really be on top of a good base model. Now, obviously, we recommend about 50 chats, but I'm not going to stop you from creating a fine tune if you believe that your answers are high enough quality. And you can filter by positive responses. You may realize that in the chat, you can leave a thumbs up on every response. If you have a model that's giving you answers that are sometimes good, sometimes bad, you only want to keep the good ones, you can do that if you like. And then 
for the confirmation, you can see that we just get kind of a review of everything. And the one time cost you would ever pay is 250. I feel like that cost is very reasonable and effective. I would hazard you to go and find someone that could offer you a fine tune for less than a thousand dollars and that fine tune even be halfway decent. If you again, you want to do this all locally and take that under your wing, by all means, go ahead. You can always just go to workspace chats and you can export the data as Alpaca and it'll work all the same if you want to go do that. It won't be easy, but if you want to do it, we won't stop you. In the interest of time, I did start a fine tune earlier than editing this video just so that everything would be in one place. And you can see actually that you have, we send you an email saying, hey, your fine tune is in progress and we're going to let you know when your model is ready. And we even will provide instructions for Olama and LM Studio so you can get these models running locally as fast as possible. Now, if you were to look at the previous email that I just showed, you would see that we started this process at 3.30 and we finished it at 3.52. So that's well under an hour. And that was only with 14 chats. And the time to train actually does not change that much between uh, basically data set sizes. And so you'll see what we provide you here. And of course, you can always get new links are expirable download links for you to download not only the full 8-bit quantized version of your fine tune, but also the instructions to load this fine tune into Olama and LM Studio. It is very simple. It is basically a drag and a drop. And I'm actually going to show you how to load a fine tune model or any custom model for that matter into Olama. We're going to do that on my Windows machine, and I'll show you how to do that once I download this model. So let me go download it and I'll start the video back when that's completed. For the second part of this video, I've downloaded the model. I have the Olama instructions as well as the LM Studio instructions downloaded so we can follow them. And what I first want to showcase is the default response of our untuned Llama 3 model that I just got from Olama directly. We can check out, see Olama list. And you can see I have Llama 3 latest installed. I downloaded it about five days ago. Um, size is about 4.7 gigs. So if we said, oh, Llama run Llama 3, we're going to just open up a quick little session and then just ask, what is anything LLM? Now, this is not our fine tune. So it should give us a pretty garbage answer. And you can see that it does. It says anything LLM stands for a large language model basically just garbage. This isn't really the answer that we wanted. Let's exit. I'm going to open up my downloads folder. And you can see we have three files here. It might be kind of hard to see Windows magnifier. Not that great. Okay. Um, so you can see we have a GGUF file, our 8-bit quantized Llama 3 model. You can see it's pretty hefty at 8 gigs, but if you were to compare this to the 8-bit version that Olama gives you, they're actually about the same size, so fine-tuning didn't impact file size too much. Now let's get this loaded into Olama. Easiest thing to do here is to just unzip it, which I have to do this way. So we're going to extract all, and we're going to extract it to this folder, and so now we should have a folder inside of downloads that is this one, Olama instructions. Now I can open the instructions and show you, or I can just tell you exactly how this works. What we have is we have our 8-bit quantized model, right? I'm just going to copy, or actually no, I'm going to drag our model into the Olama folder just so that they're in the same place. Then I'm going to want to edit this make file, and then we can load that into Olama. Olama will copy our model automatically do all the templatizing and everything so we can chat with it and then we can use it anywhere we use any olama model it's actually really really cool that they do the auto detection let me show you how to get it set up let's open up this make file like i said and we're going to open with honestly even notepad is okay so you can see that the only contents in this file is basically a path to wherever the model is we can just go up here copy this and give it the full path. And I mean, I guess the slashes matter, so we'll do that. And then we're just gonna control S to save it. And now our make file is complete and we're ready to load this into Olama. Easiest way to do that, right click in the Explorer, open in terminal, and we're gonna be automatically in our folder. And all we just have to do is Olama create, the name of our model we'll just call anything LLM, I guess. 
And then we want to designate the make file, which is literally right next to us. And what's going to happen is this process will take about, I don't know, five minutes, doesn't take that long. And it is going to copy the GGUF file here, put it into the OLAMA's model directory. And you could actually delete the downloaded file that we just uh, moved into this folder. You don't need it anymore. You technically have two copies after doing that. And you can see actually we're done now. So if we are to hop in and go OLAMA list, we have two models now. We have the LAMA3 and Anything LLM. So let's run the Anything LLM, our fine tune, and ask that same question, what is Anything LLM? It's going to boot up our model. And once we're ready to send a prompt, we just send it, send it. And if you look at the content of this answer, this is dead on accurate. This is only from 14 chats, mind you. The data was already baked in all of the documents and rag that just helped tune this model. We now have Llama 3 answering questions that are very, very out of its training set 100% accurately. Imagine we use this model inside the Anything LLM app and have rag on top of it to automatically keep the most up-to-date information relevant and get citations. And that's all it took to get a fine-tuned model. We only, again, had 14 chats and were able to produce a model that is a strong foundational model, Llama 3, but with knowledge that it inherently was not trained on. And we can take this model anywhere we want. It is yours. It was trained on your data. And of course, if you want to clean up the model so you don't have two copies of your model floating around, you can either delete the entire OLAMA folder uh, instructions that we just did here. Or if you want to delete it from OLAMA, you would just do OLAMA RM, and then you would just type in the name of the custom model. And you can see it was deleted. And if we did OLAMA list, our model is gone. So we kept the storage space. Now, again, that was a Q8 model. That's the largest quantization that there is. And you can watch a previous videos I've done about what quantization really even is. It's basically compression. That is it for the OLAMA section of this video. I'm now going to pivot into loading your custom fine tune into LM Studio. For the final part of this video, I'm going to show you how to load our custom fine tuned LAMA 3 8B model into LM Studio. The process is frankly more easy if you've never used a terminal because LM Studio is just a UI application. And again, you can use this model wherever you like, whether that be in anything LLM, the app, or elsewhere. It's your model. You can do what you want. First thing we're going to do is we're going to download our instructions and make sure that we have our GGUF Q8 model that we got from the fine tuning process. We're going to extract this folder. And then once it is extracted, you'll actually see there's an instructions here and also a folder that already says anything LLM. We're going to click into that. We're going to see this subfolder. And you're going to see that there is just an empty placeholder here. What all you want to do is just take our model, drag it into that subfolder and delete that. And that's pretty much it. Let's boot up LM Studio. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go to my models and then you're going to want to show in file explorer, I believe. We're going to keep that open. We're going to go to wherever that subfolder was go to the LM Studio instructions, and then just right here, we're going to take the top level folder, just move it into here. And that's that should be all we need to do. Um, basically, all this does is it just puts the GGUF in window of LM Studio where it keeps models and keeps track of all of your downloaded models. Um, you can change this namespace from anything LLM to just your name if you wanted to. It's totally up to you. We just had to call it something. And if we go outside into here, and we go to select a model, we should have this, this fine tune anything LLM. This is the model that we just downloaded. And uh, actually, I should probably start a local, a local, let's start a little playground actually for this. The one thing that you will want to keep in mind with LM Studio specifically, if you're using this in the playground, is you want to make sure you use the right prompt template. Unlike Olama, LM Studio does not assume your prompt template. We are using Llama 3. So just use the Llama 3 template. You can add a system prompt. If you like, you can offload to GPU. If you like, I'm going to 
I guess just do max because I know that my GPU can handle it. You know, they have context length. They also have like the infinite context stuff. Whatever you want to do, doesn't matter. Um, we should now be good to send a chat. Let's reload it. And then let's ask that same question that we asked to Olama. Let's ask it, what is anything LLM? And you can see that we get an accurate answer. If we were to load in Llama 3, it would give us garbage output because it doesn't know what anything LLM is. It's a cool project, but we're just not popular enough to get trained on, I guess. And so, yeah, we had to do some custom rag, but imagine your use case is standard operating procedures or some kind of uh, PDF or <laughs> textbook or research procedures or research data. All of these things are pieces of information that can get baked into a fine tune so that you can just have a base level model that is very capable like Llama 3 and then add on that extra layer of background knowledge that just needs to be baked into the model. And you can do it with as little as apparently 14 chats, obviously quality dependent. And in summary, that is how you can get a no code fine-tuned model directly on your machine using Olama or LM Studio to run it and using anything LLM to just make all of that happen without the headache of doing it all. If you like this project and you like what we're about, anything LLM is an open source project. We're at 17.7K stars on GitHub, which is very awesome. I'm extremely thankful for this. And hopefully this fine-tuning kind of pipeline just becomes another thing that you can act on if you want to and by no means is required in the app. It's just something that can help maybe squeeze another 10%, maybe even 20% out of your LLM responses. And of course, if you tune in in the future or subscribe to this channel, uh, I'll actually be walking through how to fine tune a model on your GPU. And with that, I just wanted to say thank you. So I'll see you in the next video.